all of you. I'm gonna invite Connor and any of our children and Gabe to come forward for our children's moment this morning. So come on down. Good morning. Good, Good morning. to see y'all today. We're taking a seat, let's do it. Hi, how's your day going so far? Mine too. Good morning. Good Glad morning. All right. So, Mr. Gabe is holding something for me. Does anyone know what this is? Yeah, it's a baton. Thank you. Thank you, Peanut Gallery. And so, do we know what this baton is used for? You may have seen it recently at the. Say it again. Well, it not, not this a one. For violence, this no. one is not for hitting people. No. <laughs> it's for relay races. Yeah. So like for track when you know like the running events. Um, some of the running events, they are relays, and the way that someone um, like carries the next lap or the next section of the race is they are past this baton, and the baton makes its way all the way around the track for like a certain or sometimes multiple times around the track, depending on the length of the race. Um, but the baton is really kind of the winner of the race because it's a team event. The baton's the one doing a lot of the moving and the, everything else is like broken up. The people do the moving too, but you know what I mean. Okay, so today we're gonna do a little bit of a relay race with this baton. Does that sound, does that sound good, does that sound fun? Okay, yeah. so. If you would like to run in the relay race, you do need to make sure you have, have good shoes that you can run in, okay? Mm, I'm out. So, all right. I do not have good running shoes all on right. today. Do you want to run? You don't have to. I know Abdel wants to. Okay. Jane, you want to? It looks like you have the right shoes okay. for it, so you two can stand up and Gabe's gonna, and you'll run? Okay. Okay, cool. So we've got four. Gabe's gonna start it for us. Yeah, he's gotta get warmed up, nice and warmed up. And I'm gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to position y'all, okay? So we're not going to do... There, you get your stretches in, too. That's good. This is good. All right. Okay. Let me... Can I see some high knees? Can you do that? Okay. There we go. Nice. All right. Okay. So, Abdiel, I'm going to place you back here. You follow me? All right. I'm going to place you back here. And then Jane. Yeah. Actually, Jane, I'm going to put you somewhere else. Isaac, can you meet me back here? Quickly, quickly. You're not running yet, but move with, with hustle. Okay. And Jane, I'm gonna put you um, at this corner by the playground. Yeah. We have, we have some interest from a new runner, somebody with a write-in candidate. Okay. Let me just split this up a little bit more then. Okay, Daniel, you can come back here. Or right there, Daniel, I'll put you in the middle, right there. That's fine, right here, that's perfect, yeah. We can be the judges. Yeah, well, you can also, we also need cheerleaders. Okay. So all of us are gonna be cheering them on because uh, that, that's kind of like part of the lesson today. Anyway, so Gabe's gonna start off, gonna pass to Daniel and then Abdiel and then Isaac and then Jane and then Jane, when you come back to me and you hand me the baton or you high five me or whatever, you cross me. Um, That'll be the end of the race, okay? And then you want everyone to come back up here. And then everyone come back up here. Yeah, okay. Ready? Set. <laughs> go. <laughs> run, 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 run. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Woo, look at them go. There they go. Run, 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 They're running. They're going into the final one, bend one, of the race. Will they make it in time? Yay! All right. All right, let's come back. Let's come back. Good job. <sighs> I didn't know if you would make it. Yeah. But you did. So glad. I'm so excited. okay, how did it come on? Come on back, Abdel. So how how did it feel having everyone cheer you on? Was it exciting? Yeah. Yeah. I used to run track. Yeah, I was, was kind of good at it. Um, I used to run track, and my favorite part was the energy that people would bring, like during the races, especially during the relays. Like it would just get really, really intense, and everyone was just like giving their all to cheer on their people. Um, and so I really loved that. And today, Pastor Lane's going to talk to us about running the race that's set before you, um, and also about this thing called the great cloud of witnesses that's cheering you on and pushing you forward in your, in your race and in your life. Um, and so that's just a little example of what that can feel like for us. And we don't always feel like we're being cheered on, but the great cloud of witnesses is still surrounding us and holding us up and supporting us. And so um, something that's important to note about track is that 
Sometimes uh, the events, you just run a half a lap. Sometimes you run multiple laps. And then there are the long distance events where you're running like, I don't know, seven laps, <laughs> like eight laps. So eight, each time you start a new lap, you might pace yourself differently. And uh, Gabe is starting kind of a new lap of his life. Um, but our great cloud of witnesses is still supporting him and uplifting him. And this is Gabe's last Sunday as uh, officially as our youth and children's interns. Oh, very Aww. sad. We're all very sad about it. Um, but we're all cheering him on and supporting him nonetheless. Yeah. So. And so we actually would love to say a prayer for you. And also we have a little gift for you. So I'm going to invite um, Gray Sexton, who's the chair of our Staff Parish Relations Committee, and yourself to stand, please. <laughs> And we, we just want to offer a word, a brief word of gratitude for your service. Well, Gabe has been a loyal and faithful servant here for more than a year. He has kept our children entertained and safe. And none of us could have asked for more than that. Good luck with the next chapter of your life. And thank, thank you. you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Gabe. So. We, we normally do a repeat after me kind of prayer, but what if today we say a prayer for Gabe? And if you're um, comfortable, may I place a hand on your shoulder? Okay. And if anybody else wants to place a hand or your hand outstretched to Gabe, let us pray for his next lap of the journey. Gracious God, we are so grateful for servant leaders and young adults like Gabe and the ministry that he has offered here at St. John's. We pray that you will give him the patience, the endurance, and the strength to continue the next lap of life. May you remember that the St. John's Church family will always be cheering him on. And may he know that you, his Lord and Savior, has run this race before and is going the distance with him always. It's in Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thanks, Gabe. You're welcome. <clears throat> and thank you all for coming and running today. You may go back to your seats. Today, as we continue in our Olympic Faith Worship Series, we're continuing to look at how not just the games themselves or even the athletes, but how uh, the entire journey of faith can be shaped and redefined by some really cool and important life lessons that can come together when athletes are striving to go the distance and when we too strive to go the distance in our faith journey. And we've been seeing that reflected in our scripture readings, as we will in just a moment. And so far, we've been reading from the Apostle Paul's writings. We've heard from him in uh, 1 Corinthians, in Philippians, and in 2 Timothy. And today, we're going to read from the letter to the Hebrews, which is a book of the Bible which is technically has an unknown author. However, many scholars believe that it could have been Paul that wrote it, though others have said it could have been written by Barnabas. Timothy, Silas, Luke, or even Priscilla. And so whoever the author is today, it, we still see this same affinity for connecting our life of faith to the life of an athlete, like we've been reading over the last few weeks. So let's read these words now from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. So then with endurance, let us run the race that is laid out in front of us, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let's throw off any extra baggage, get rid of the sin that trips us up, and fix our eyes on Jesus, faith's pioneer and perfecter. He endured the cross, ignoring the shame for the sake of the joy that was laid out in front of him, and sat down at the right hand of God's throne. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Oh God, when our own words are confusing or they fail us, we can seek wisdom in your words. And so as we dive deeper into our passage for today, may your spirit of wisdom and truth guide us in our meditations and in our lives. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. As I confessed last week, I have spent a lot of time in front of the television watching the Olympics. 
And as sad as I was last Sunday to watch the closing ceremony, I am happy to have my life back in the evenings. But have y'all noticed through all the media coverage and, and the little vignettes that the prime time does in the evenings that most of the focus of those little stories are about the greats, those athletes that they expect to win gold. But when you think about it, there are, are many more athletes who, who will never medal. They, these are athletes that are just excited that they made it to the games. And some are even athletes whose dreams have died because of what happened, sometimes rather painfully and unexpectedly, like that Australian synchronized diver whose, whose foot came down and slipped a little off the side of the, the springboard. And she and her partner, after years, had been working to get to this place. And, and they, in that slip, actually slipped out of third place and were left with, without a medal altogether. And some of the athletes do win medals, but it's only after incredible work, like, uh, like Cook and Bacon, who are the U.S. synchronized divers. Uh, they had a difficult road that led to their victory. Now, Cook, Cook went uh, four different times to the Olympic trials, trying to get to the Tokyo Olympics, but never made it. And Bacon herself made it to Tokyo, but only came in 13th. But this year, they came home with a silver medal. Now, I don't know about you, but my heart is warmed when I read these kind of stories. I feel inspired, though I am not an athlete, when I see these incredible redemption stories that come from these life experiences. They remind us that the thrill of victory is so much sweeter and sometimes only possible because of the agony of defeat. It makes me think of a story that many of us you may know well that, that Disney then immortalized in the 2004 movie Miracle uh, about the U.S. hockey team from the 1984 Olympics. Now, the Soviets were the obvious rulers and dominated on the Olympic ice. So when the U.S. made it to the finals of the Olympics, Everyone assumed it was going to be same old, same old. They had already endured 20 years of defeat in this match. And so they felt so much so that, that this was bigger than anything they'd ever done before. In fact, they weren't just winning a sport. They were tra trying to beat at the communists. And so this was a time while we're still in such disarray around communism and our own uh, work towards bringing freedom around the world. And, and, and we knew that if we could just beat them, that we would see a victory for our nation as well. But that was not in the cards in anyone's mind because just 13 days before the Olympics, the Soviets and the U.S. had an, uh, what they call an exhibition match. And they were beat. We were beat 10 to 3. When the two teams finally went to the Olympic ice together, the Soviets dominated during the first period. And no one was surprised by this. But what was surprising is that they were only up by one point. It was 2 to 1 for most of the first period. And because we tied it up and scored a goal right as the time was running out on the first period, the Russian coach was so infuriating that he, he swapped out their goalie and their star player to make a point. Well, that was his first big mistake because the Soviets, though they dominated in that second period for most of the time, it, we were still right behind them. It was three to two and we were hanging on. And, and then at the minute, eight minutes and 39 seconds, we tied up the game, and it was 3-3. Three to three. And, and then 80 seconds later, they scored another goal. So now we're in the lead, and we head into the end finals, and we were able to hold on till the end. There was this major thrill of victory. And then it propelled that team to go on to that championship game where they did indeed beat Finland to take home the gold in hockey after 20 years losing streak. But how easy would it have been for them to just quit during those two decades? For all those hockey players out there who'd been dreaming of gay going to the Olympics to just let their fear of failure and that finality of not winning to, to believe that they had any effort left to give. How easy it is it in our own lives to, and how often do we decide that it's time to throw in the towel 
and to accept failure. How many times have you yourself wondered, what's the point in persisting? I'm tired, I'm burned out, I'm done. Well, if you have lived at all, you know the agony of defeat. You know of the pain of investing your time and your energy, your blood, sweat, and tears, your hours and your days, maybe even your whole life into something, a career, a degree, a relationship, your health or the health of a loved one, only to feel as though you have failed. You've disappointed yourself or hurt yourself in some way. So where is your own sense of agony in defeat? Is it cancer, addiction, mental health, financial ruin, work, life, balance, marriage, singleness, friendship, parenting? Is it that battle of just trying to stay committed and grounded in your faith journey. Each of us has been through deeply challenging seasons of life, and all of us, not just the Olympic elite, know the taste of defeat, the agony of that sense of loss. After all, Christ himself knew that as well. He, he, though, should have never experienced it, didn't deserve it, never had a mistake, and yet he took on the pain of the world, our own mistakes and failures, and experienced the weight of rejection, and the agony of pain and betrayal, and what many would think had been a defeat. And he himself told us in his own teachings that in this life there will be troubles, in this life, we will have heartbreak and grief and challenge. And so the good news of the gospel is not that God takes that all away. The good news of the gospel is that God is with us through all of that. And that even though we experience at times the agony of defeat, it is never the end of our story. It is never the thing that defines us, that defines our lives. When we choose to let God work in and through us, when we choose to walk with God on this journey, God will never let us lose in vain. God doesn't create the trials and the defeats, hear me on that, but God can use them to strengthen us to, so that we might better endure in the future, that we might become stronger so that we might once again become victorious in some way. So the question is not, will we suffer in life? It's when. And when we do, how will we respond? Will we quit or will we persist? The author of Hebrews points us to the cross, to Christ's journey, and invites us and encourages us that we as people of faith are those who have been given the Holy Spirit and that we are called to carry on, that we are called to persist and, and pass that baton on into the future so that others will, will know of the light of Christ. And will it be easy? Of course not, no. Christ's journey to the cross was not an easy one, and he even wanted to quit when it got close to the end. So we don't do it because it's easy. We persevere because persistence is the only way to overcome defeat with a victory. And sometimes that persistence will take weeks or months or even years of our lives. For the U.S. men's hockey team, it took 20 years. But as another Olympian, Candy Costi Merrill said that when she lost at the world championship years ago, the best way out is through, and there's always light. Well, not long after that statement, she and her teammate did go on to win the gold in 1984. We really are invited to live through those experiences because when we are able to, to dig deep into what those 
defeats teach us, what, what the games of life can teach us, particularly about our own faith journey and about our own ability to, to stand strong, we can see that those defeats actually played a part in us becoming our better selves. They help develop us into the person that we are today and will continue to carry us into the journey that will lie ahead. And so this means that our persistence is not in vain either. As our passage from Hebrews reminds us, we are never alone in this fight. We're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses, by the saints who have gone before us, and by the siblings of Christ that we have right here in this very room, and the people that we have in our lives who are there cheering us on. People who have survived these trials and who have been there and who know what we are going through in your fight for cancer, in a changing of a career, in your grief, in your mental health struggles, in your financial struggles. And they have felt the pain and those feelings that we feel that you don't think you can go on for another day, that you really aren't sure if this indeed will pass that hope seems lost, and that the light seems dim. And yet they are here, and we are all here, and the saints who have gone before us are all around us and are within us, and they are saying, you can do this. You can keep pushing through. Choose your faith. Choose God. Fix your eyes upon Jesus, who endures all of this, and more, and now sits at the right hand of God. Remember that it was the power to rise Jesus from the dead that enables us to live through this life as well. That same power of resurrection is ours too. So even if you are weary, do not lose heart. Keep running the race marked out for you with perseverance. And when you do, you will come through to this other side, eventually seeing a victory in, in some way or form that will allow you to shine a light for someone else who is they themselves in the midst of an agony and a defeat that they need some light in their lives too. It reminds me of this moment that happened on the pool deck at the Olympics that was easy to miss. It was just only if you were watching during the live streaming of it that um, Caleb Dressel, one of our Olympic swimmers, had just won his eighth gold medal, and he was nearing perhaps the end of his career. And when Dressel stepped off the podium, he walked straight ahead to one of the young swimmers on the U.S. team who was just about to swim in perhaps his first race. And, and Dressel draped his gold medal over the shoulders of his neck. What an incredible vote of confidence to have this Olympic athlete share that victory with you, this moment of encouragement before you go out for the race of your life, knowing that whether you win or lose, you have touched gold. But you know, we are all going to experience defeats in life, but we are never going to be, we are called to never let that defeat define us or be the end. In fact, the founder of our Methodist movement, John Wesley, talked about this in his, his own self-examination questions. He would ask himself regularly, am I defeated in any part of my life? And if so, what am I doing about it? So how about us? How about you? Are you defeated in any part of your life? And if so, what are you doing about it? is now the time to make a choice to persevere. Now, that doesn't mean that you grin and bear it. I'm not suggesting that you stay in an abusive situation or that you should be walked all over. But for some of us, that might just mean getting out of bed more days next week than you did this week. For some of us, that might mean changing jobs. For some of us, that might mean cutting up the credit cards. For some of us, it might mean stepping out of our comfort zones to do something that we know God has been calling us to do, but we have not done it, whether it's in our personal life or for the church or for our own spiritual development. 
For others of us, it might be getting serious about naming the root causes of these problems, like going to therapy, saying I'm sorry, confronting instead of avoiding a conflict, and, and choosing to speak the truth instead of betraying or abandoning ourselves and our needs. For all of us, it will, be me, it will mean moving with and in God's grace, this grace that is before us in all that we do in life and that God is offering us day by day, this, this gift of love and kindness that we should then offer to ourselves and to others. While we try and exercise things like patience and empathy and compassion for ourselves and others and, and be willing to receive those gifts, and it also means remembering that no matter the failure, it's never final. Our defeats do not define our lives. It's the defeats that often lead to victories. And so if we will choose to persist with God, to fix our eyes upon Jesus, who is our source and goal of our faith, then we too will find the thrill of life continues. And so let us pray now in his name. O oh, gracious one, re return us back to you. R return us with you to that moment where we have felt the defeat and agony of life. No matter how recent or distant that time might have been. And don't just show us the way out, but show us the way through. Strengthen us, Lord. Give us patience and perseverance. Inspire us to give of ourselves so that we can further join you and your mission to bring life and love to all so that we might all know the thrill of victory. Then in Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now I invite us to stand and sing together the hymn of promise. If you're comfortable, let's lift our bodies together. In the bulb there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree, in cocoons a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. There's a song in every silence, seeking word and melody. There's a dawn in every darkness, bringing hope to you and me from the past will come the future what it holds a mystery unrevealed until its season something god alone can see in our end is our beginning in a time infinity in our doubt there is believing in our life, eternity, in our death, a resurrection, at the last a victory, unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. You may be seated. At this time, I'm going to invite our ushers to come forward, and as they run their race down the aisle, just joking, uh, we want to encourage you to find ways that you might run the race by sharing your gifts. For God has endowed you with something incredible that makes you uniquely you, those spiritual gifts, those talents that God wants you to use in the world. And you've been given gifts of finances too that enable you to have the joys of life that you long for and also to support causes and faith communities that really matter to you. And so I appreciate the ways that you are already giving financially to the work of God here at St. John's. I encourage you to keep pressing onward in that gift and in that goal of giving as we share in this time of offering now. Will you pray with me? 
O God, who has been so generous with our own lives, may we turn out and offer our lives to the world and in your service. Thank you for the gift of your patience and your, your encouragement in our lives. For you have always been there for us, and you understand all the agony and defeat that we've experienced, as well as the thrill and victory of new life and resurrection. And so may we turn this day over to you and turn these gifts in our service into your loving care as well, as we strive forward to be on this journey of life together with you. All this we pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. invite you to make your seats. Find your seats now. <laughs> make, them, make them, find them, sit in them, do what you want to do. You know, one of the um, ways that athletes persist in their field is by feeding their bodies with healthy things, things that will nourish them and help them grow stronger. And that's sort of what happens when we come to the communion table, too. We are nourished with healthy God's breath, breathed into these gifts that are breathed into us. And so we come being fed in a spiritual way that we might persist on this journey. Christ knew that he was coming to a time when he would experience much agony and what we would consider a great defeat at the hands of death. Because we, as his disciples earlier, didn't know the, the rest of the story. But those of us today do. We know the end of the story and the victory that comes at Easter. And yet, as he gathered that night, he was trying to prepare his disciples for how they too might persevere on their journey of faith when he wasn't there. So he gathered them all together and he, he took bread from the table and he blessed it and broke it and said, take and eat this. Let this be nourishment for your body as this is my body broken and given for you. And then in the same way, he took a cup and said, drink from this deeply, all of you, for this is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. So drink from this often in remembrance of me. 
And so now we pray that, oh God, you would pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here this day and upon these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine. May they nourish us for the journey of life ahead that we in receiving this incredible gift of your grace may turn out and offer grace for the world. Strengthen us by this meal that we can continue to be light bearers for your world as we seek to live through this journey of faith, knowing that you walk beside us always. All this we pray in the holy name of Christ who taught us this prayer that we now say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This bread that we break reminds us that even when our life feels defeated and broken, we are made strong and whole again by Christ. And this cup of plenty is one that fills us to the brim of God's grace and mercy and forgiveness. And so we are invited to drink deeply from the gifts of God. And so we invite all of you to come and receive, for this is Christ's table where he invites everyone. So you don't need to be a member of St. John's or any church for that matter. Those who desire the grace of Christ in their hearts and lives are welcome to come. The ushers will help direct you forward. And as you come, come with your hand outstretched, ready to receive. We'll break off a piece of the bread for you and dip it into your cup and place it into your open hands. There's also a gluten-free option at your left as you come, and the kneeler rails are ready for you to come and continue your prayer time in that space as well. And so come now as you are led, and may the Spirit of Christ dwell in you as you partake in this meal with him. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, oh Lord, have mercy. Let us drink wine together on our knees. Let us drink wine together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, oh Lord, have mercy on me. Let us praise God together on our knees. Let us praise God together on our knees. When I fall to the rising sun oh lord have mercy on me one bread one body one lord of all one cup of blessing which we bless and we though many throughout the earth we are one body in this one Lord 
Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman or man, no more. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless. And we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one, Lord. Grain for the fields, scattered and grown, gathered to one for all. One cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one, Lord. See. God and his righteousness and all these things shall be gathered unto you. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you. Please join me in our closing prayer. Lord, as we run the race you have set before us, help us keep our eyes on your goals, not our own. When we falter, give us fresh strength and courage. When we are fleet-footed, let us give you the glory. By your Spirit, send us out to exercise our faith, growing faster, higher, stronger together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Rhonda. As we prepare to go out onto the world to share God's love with one another and with the whole community, we want to invite you to some ways to reconnect with us throughout the week and in the coming month with lots of mission and fellowship opportunities. Um, and the first starts today. Our, our children's music ministry program, Music Makers, will be resuming for the school year this afternoon at 4.30. And so this is for students of all ages to come and make music with Dr. Steve. They gather in in the choir room at uh, 4.30 on Sunday afternoons. So head on over whenever, uh, if you're feeling called to make some music together. Our Good Grief Fellowship will be hosting its monthly gathering at George's this Tuesday night. Sometimes they meet here, sometimes they go out, and this will be a time of fellowship outside of the walls of the church, but a time where we can come together and be support of one another, wherever you may be on the journey of grief. And so you're encouraged to go if you're available um, at 5.30 on Tuesday night. Our monthly youth gathering called Wednesday Night Live is meeting this Wednesday night at Surge at 6 o'clock, and that's for our students in 6th through 12th grade. They're all invited. 
We are getting ready also to start up a brand new Bible study in September. This is a six-week study on the book of Psalms, and it's going to start on Tuesday, September 10th. And there are two different opportunities. There's a morning and an evening um, study that's being offered. And if you're able to come, you pick the time that works best for you. And there's a book and uh, some ways for you to sign up in your bulletin and online so you can let us know that you're going to attend. There is a little bit of homework before that first week. So you're going to want to sign up and get your book ahead of time. So read more about that in your bulletin. We're hosting two mission work days for an international program called Days for Girls on the first two Saturdays of September from 9 to noon. And, and this program creates menstruation kits for young women and girls in developing countries that enable them to continue going to school and work and continue about the days of their lives. And this is an incredible ministry that our United Women in Faith facilitate for us. And so we invite everyone to come out and, and participate in these work days. You can come to one or both. You don't have to have any sewing experience, just a desire to help out. And so we invite you to come on the first two Saturdays of the month. We are also having a one-day mission opportunity down to St. Mark's United Methodist Church on Sunday, September 22nd. This is a one-day mission in which we depart from the church here around 7 in the morning and drive down to New Orleans to prepare a meal for the people of the St. Mark's com the, the community around St. Mark's and the French Quarter for the unhoused and the hungry there. And then after we worship with them, we serve the meal. The, the people actually come into the sanctuary of the church and sit in the pews and receive box meals. Some stay and eat and others take them to go with them. And it's an incredible opportunity to extend our vision of feeding people out into the wider community down in New Orleans. So I hope you'll consider going. You can talk to Reverend Larry about that today. He'll also share a ministry moment about it in a couple of weeks. And a really exciting thing is that we have had somebody offer to match the first $500 that we can raise towards providing the food for this mission. And so let's not miss out on this opportunity to double our impact. So the first $500 we can raise to cover the cost of the food, because it takes several hundred dollars to pay for all the food for approximately 100 people. And so let's do this together. Help us get to that goal. And that money will carry us forward, Not maybe not just this one mission, but maybe for the next one next year, too, because we like to go several times a year. So I hope you'll either sign up to go or sign up to give in some way. Speaking of giving in some way, this is a, a new kind of announcement, but we need grocery bags in the shepherd's market. We typically um, restock, uh, we give our groceries out with uh, d disposable grocery bags, and we typically have a ton of them, but our supply has dwindled. So if you have some grocery bags at your home that you're ready to get rid of, bring them by the office or the pantry on pantry days. So we would really appreciate that help if you've got some to pass on. And now if there's anyone here who would like to join our church family, be a part of this community who is striving to seek Christ in our lives, I invite you to come forward while we sing together our closing hymn, How Firm a Foundation. If you're comfortable, I invite you to stand. How firm a foundation ye say of the Lord is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he hath said to you who for refuge to Jesus have fled? Fear not, I am with thee, oh be not dismayed. For I am thy God and will still give thee aid. I'll strengthen and help thee and cause thee to stand upheld by my righteous omnipotent hand. The soul that on Jesus still leans for repose 
I will not, I will not desert to its foes That so, though all hell should endeavor to shake I'll never, no, never, no, never forsake The question is not if, but when will we have our next experience of defeat but the good news is that Christ, who has gone before us, is preparing a way for a bigger victory in the future. And so may you be willing to take those hard steps first that lead you to a glorious life in the future. And may the peace of Christ and the fellowship of all the communion of saints that surround us be with you now and always. Amen. An old, old story. How the Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus. My Savior forever, he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath.